addressed at different scales. So of course if we look at the sort of macroeconomic picture, uh, the, some of the countries in the region cannot afford always to import the food they need and they're so heavily dependent on the international trade regime and fluctuations in price. So for these countries, coming up with some system to sort of basically have food storage, whether it's regional or local, and some ability, ability to ride out price fluctuations that we've seen, of course, in recent years is very, very important. But I think as a political scientist, the picture that I'm really interested in also is the sort of marginalization of rural populations from the political calculus of the center. So certainly for places like Egypt and Tunisia, the, both the obstacles have been the lack of political clout of rural constituencies outside of sort of traditional patronage networks, but that also gives us glimmers of hope. So when we've heard at the workshop people talking about social inclusion and social coherence as being values that are now important to the government and to sort of the political elites, this is actually opening new opportunities in Tunisia for inclusion of rural populations in thinking holistically about food, nutrition, but also access to land, access to credit, access to markets. So I think those two things are tied together. Um, the obstacles include lack of political voice for rural populations, but that can also then be seen as an opportunity to sort of further engage um, concerns at the center about political stability and security. Right, I think there's a, a few places that seems to be the case, and I think it's mostly looking that Tunisia has now uh, created these high-level committees on sustainability and is introducing things like school lunches for children that are more nutritious that we heard about from the World Food Program in the workshop. But I think for many of the countries, we're still rooted in very um, long-standing uh, ways of thinking about food security that are not adapting quickly enough. Um, that is not necessarily going to stay that way. I think international organizations are working very hard to introduce new ideas and also people in these countries are trying very hard to adopt them, but there's a lot of objections to moving away from food uh, security and thinking about food security in a more holistic manner that's not domestic production. We heard that at the workshop actually, it's still very firmly rooted. Um, there's also the in international dependencies in trade, which I think these countries are rightfully worried about. So the point about diversifying your sources of imports, but also diversifying your financing mechanisms is even more important. So what I would like to see even more of is an explicit linkage in national development planning to think about diversifying our economy, not only sort of supporting agriculture, but actually employing out of agriculture uh, more um, sort of quickly. And I think that's where you can see countries start, starting to think, well, how can we generate employment um, in ways that are not going to only focus on the agricultural sector?